How can you build a serverless application in .NET? The cool thing about serverless is that it's not actually without any servers. It's just that you don't have to manage any servers. And an interesting option for building serverless applications with .NET is using AWS Lambda, which I'm going to demo in this video using .NET Aspire. Here's what we are going to build in this video. I have an existing .NET Aspire application that's orchestrated using .NET Aspire and it has an integration with AWS. We are using AWS to spin up an SQS queue and an SNS topic, which allows us to communicate between our two components, the orders API, which accepts incoming API requests, processes them, and then queues a message on the SNS topic. And this just sends the message over to the respective queue, which the order processor picks up and does whatever processing it needs to do. So with the setup we currently have, these two components are actually two ASP.NET Core web APIs, and we want to make it so that we can host them in a serverless way using AWS Lambda. You know, I'm a fan of drawing boxes. So here's a simple architecture diagram to describe what we currently have. The orders API accepts incoming requests from the internet. It handles these requests and then publishes a message to SNS, which is going to route this to the queue that's subscribed to this SNS topic. And we have our order processor component, which is pulling this SQS queue for any messages and then processing them accordingly. As I said, we're using .NET Aspire for orchestration. And we're also using the CDK, the Cloud Development Kit, for writing some infrastructure as code that's going to take care of the simple notification service and the simple queue service. So here's what we're going to build in this application. I'm going to re-architect this entire solution so that the orders API becomes an AWS Lambda. And we're going to place an API gateway in front of the orders API. It's going to handle incoming API requests and route them to our Lambda. Then the Lambda is going to process this request, publish a message to SNS, which is going to send it over to our queue on the simple queue service. And we are going to eliminate polling from our SQS instance or our queue because we can also make our orders processor a Lambda and we can give it an SQS message trigger. So what's going to happen is we're going to wire these up so that whenever we get a message on our queue, we're going to trigger the Lambda, which is going to kick off our orders processor component. So let me show you how we can implement this starting from our orders API component. If we take a look at the orders API, you will see that it has just one endpoint implemented using minimal APIs. And there is a very interesting integration from AWS that allows us to turn our minimal APIs into AWS Lambdas. So what we have to do is install an additional NuGet package here. I'm going to look for it. And the one I'm looking for is Amazon Lambda ASP.NET Core Server Hosting. I'm going to install the latest version and you're going to see just how simple this is to use. So all we have to do is say builder services and we're going to call add aws lambda hosting and i'm going to choose the lambda event source of http api so now when we run this application on aws it's going to allow it to function as an aws lambda i have a dedicated video about how all of this works i'm going to leave it in the description below and for now we can close this down this is the only change we need to make to the orders api now let's move on to setting up our api gateway i'll have to opt into some preview features to set up the API gateway. And I'm going to comment out our orders API resource because we're going to create a different one. So what I'm going to do is create a new resource, which I'm going to call the orders API Lambda. And we can do that by saying builder add AWS Lambda function. I'm going to choose the project for this function and it's still going to target my orders API. So nothing changes here. For the component name, I'm going to choose orders API. I also don't want to change this. Now for the Lambda handler, this is the actual Lambda function that's supposed to be handling this Lambda. In the current setup, we can just choose the top level namespace or assembly, which is orders API. As this is sufficiently short, I'm just going to place it all in the same line. Now, when it comes to any references, I will have to reference the SDK config. This is what allows my application to connect to my AWS services. I'm also going to reference our orders topic so that I can still access the environment variables and know where to publish my messages. So now we have our Lambda function but we have to place an API gateway in front of it with the current setup that we have. Because we are running this locally, I'm going to introduce a Lambda service emulator. This will allow us to run and debug our Lambda functions when developing on our local machines. And I'm also going to add an API gateway 
by calling add AWS API Gateway Emulator. Now, let's give this resource a name. I'll call it API Gateway. For the API Gateway type, I'm going to choose HTTP version 2. And I'm also going to pass in an instance of the API Gateway Emulator options because this allows me to set a port, which I'm going to set to 3000. And this will just make it easier to work with during development. Now, let's add some references here. I'm going to say with reference and we want to have a reference to the orders API Lambda, but you realize there's an overload here that allows us to configure which HTTP method we want to use with the specific Lambda. I'm going to say any because the actual HTTP methods could vary depending on which minimal API endpoints I'm exposing in the orders API. When it comes to the route, I'm going to set the base route first, then I'm going to add another reference here and pass in a wildcard. And what this setup allows us to do is capture any parameter using the proxy wildcard and then pass it along as an argument to the Lambda function. So with this setup in place, our AWS Lambda and the API gateway, I'm going to start the Aspire app host. If we take a look at the Aspire dashboard, we can now see a few additional resources. Here is our API gateway. It's also available on the graph and you can see that it's running on localhost 3000. Now there's also our AWS Lambda running the orders API and we should be able to test these out from Postman by sending an HTTP request to our API gateway. It's running on localhost 3000 and if I send this request, you'll see that we get a response back, which means that the request processing is working. But to confirm, let's take a look at the distributed traces and you can see our post request here to the orders API running through the complete flow and publishing a respective message to SNS. And then we also have our handler running here, processing the message from SQS. So we've managed to move the orders API component from an ASP.NET Core server-side application into a serverless application running on AWS Lambda. Another thing that the Lambda emulator, which you can run from .NET Aspire introduces, is the Lambda test tool UI. So let me click this button here. And this opens a nice simple UI that you can use to test out your Lambda functions. You can choose which type of request you want to send. So you'll see how we can use this later when implementing our SQS integration and you can customize the body for example, send this request and debug your applications locally. Now let's go back to our Aspire app host. The orders processor currently is running as a .NET application and it's using the AWS messaging library to introduce a polar that's going to pick up messages from our orders queue and hand them off to the respective handler. Now, to run this as a Lambda function, you would have to make quite a few changes here and I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to introduce a new project into the solution, which is going to use the Lambda template. I already have these templates available, so I'm going to create a new AWS Lambda project. Let's call this the orders processor Lambda and let me create this project. The next thing you can choose is the type of template or to be more precise, the trigger. And in this case, I'm going to use a simple SQS function, which is going to be pre-configured with an SQS trigger. So let me click finish. This is going to scaffold my project. I'm going to update it to target.NET 9. And additionally, I'm going to update the NuGet packages. So what do we have inside of the scaffolded Lambda? Well, we have one class representing our Lambda function. It has a function handler and the process message method. So let's place a breakpoint here for the time being. And let's see how to wire this up from our app host. I'm going to add a reference to the Lambda project inside of the app host. And now I should be able to configure this as an AWS Lambda. I'm going to say builder and AWS Lambda function. I'm going to choose projects and let's target the orders processor Lambda. Let's give it a name of orders processor Lambda. For the Lambda handler, I'm going to pass in a fully qualified name to the actual function handler method. And let's also pass in a new instance of the Lambda function options. Here you can configure a couple of things like the default application log level. Let's say we choose the default level of info. And you can also choose the log format. I, for example, like using JSON, so I'm going to specify that. Now, when it comes to configuring our Lambda, let's also add a reference to the SDK config. Let's add a reference to the orders queue. And to actually wire this up as a source, there's this extension method called SQS event source, where we can pass in an SQS resource, and it's going to wire up the respective trigger to invoke the Lambda function when we receive a message on this queue. Now, we're not going to use this just yet. Let me show you how we can run and test this. Here's the Aspire dashboard with our new Lambda function. It also has the respective SQS event source configured. I'm going to go into the Lambda test tool UI. From the Lambda test tool, just make sure you're targeting the correct Lambda function. I'll make sure that the selected one is the orders processor Lambda. 
I'm going to select SQS as my request type and let's just click invoke. And right away you can see we had the breakpoint in our Lambda function. And if we take a look at the message body, it contains the message from our UI. So this is how you can easily test out your Lambda functions. Now let me show you how to actually wire this up with our complete flow. I'll need to reference a couple of projects from my Lambda function. I'm going to add a reference to the Aspire service defaults and also to my shared library where my message contract exists. And let me drop in a couple of implementation details. One more thing we want to have here when it comes to telemetry is make sure that we have instrumentation for our Lambda. I'm going to look for Open Telemetry Instrumentation AWS Lambda and let's install the latest version. And this is going to let us easily introduce instrumentation for AWS Lambda. So inside of my tracing setup, I want to say add AWS Lambda configurations. And this is going to be enough for our use case. And this also exposes a helper that we can use inside of our Lambda function to introduce tracing. I'm going to drop in some code to to speed up our implementation. We'll need an iHost instance, a tracer provider. We're going to wire these up from the function constructor. I'll create a new host application builder called add service defaults. This is the extension method added by the service defaults library. And we're going to build a host instance and get back an instance of the tracer provider. Then I'm going to update my function handler to use this. So I'll replace the method body with this one. I'm using the AWS Lambda wrapper to call the trace async method where I can pass in the trace provider and this is just going to run everything inside of open telemetry allowing me to view my traces in the aspire dashboard and also any open telemetry exporter that you have configured and then i'm going to update the process message async method to what we already had in the event handler in the orders processor component and the one standout here is that we have to parse the json from the message body and this is actually a bit nested because what sns sends to sqs is an envelope i'm going to show you what this looks like when we land on the breakpoint here. And then the rest of the body here is just what we already had in place in the orders processor component. So let me place a breakpoint here and let's test this out by sending a request to the orders API Lambda. I'll send a post request from Postman. This is going to hit our API gateway component. And then this is going to route the request to the orders API Lambda. And you can see the request lands in our minimal API endpoint where we can process this request. And we're just going to publish a message to SNS. I'm going to hit continue. Now this is going to hit SNS in the AWS cloud. The message will be routed to an SQS queue, and then we're going to hit this breakpoint in our SQS Lambda function, where we are going to process our actual order created event. Now we have to parse this from the message body, and if you take a look at the contents here, you'll see this is actually an envelope created by SNS and passed over to SQS. And the actual JSON message that we published is inside of this message property here with some metadata. So we have to parse through all of this, which is what this code is doing, and eventually we get an order created event instance with all the respective properties. So then I can go ahead and handle this. You can see we just have some information logs here and simulating some work. And then I'm going to hit continue. And this completes our AWS Lambda, which is processing messages from SQS. If we take a look at the distributed traces, you can see our post request to the orders component. This is handled by our AWS Lambda. Then there's the post request to the API gateway, which then sends it over to the actual Lambda to be handled and return back to response. And then here's the trace which represents our message handler running in the orders processor Lambda component. So this is how you can work with AWS Lambda to build serverless applications with .NET Aspire. And if you want to grab the source code for this video, it's going to be available completely for free from the pinned comment right below. And if you want to learn more about AWS Lambda, including how to deploy it, you can go ahead and watch this video next. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this gets recommended to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.